Hey everyone, so in this video, we are going to learn about the async await. As in last video, we have discussed about the promises and I told you earlier that async await is now the more modified way to show our asynchronous JavaScript than promises, right? So in this video, we are going to look how async await, how we can represent our asynchronous JavaScript in async await. We will learn all the concepts. We will learn the one of the most usage of async await is to how fetch API works, right? how to fetch and then how to use async await to get the data from the API. So let's start. So see, async await, how do we define this? We see async and await is the, like in promises, we define a promise, right? We then define resolve and reject, right? And then using dot then and dot catch, we, we call that resolve and reject part. Same as in async await, we have to first define the promise, right? We have to first define the promise by using the new keyword, new promise, and then we define the resolve and reject method. Now, in, in promises, we used to do by, we used, we used to call resolve and reject by dot then and dot catch. But now we don't want all that stuff, right? We don't want all that stuff. So in this, by using async await, we use just async function. We write our async, then function name, and then inside that body, we I use the keyword await and we call that promise, right? So let's say I define a promise with the word help, right? I define a promise with the word help. Now I define the resolve method and I find the reject method, right? Now I write a async function with the async keyword. Async keyword is necessary, right? Async keyword, async and function name. And then I use the await keyword. Now here to understand is what is await keyword. See, await returns a promise, right? Await returns a promise. Await says, okay, let me, let me wait and let me first resolve that promise. So whatever the promise says, it will always return the resolve part of that promise. So I define a promise help. I define the resolve and reject part. And then using await keyword, I will call the resolve part. So you can see, right? Using in promises, we use dot then to call that resolve part. But in async await, we use the await keyword to call that resolve part. So what await keyword will do? Await says, okay, I will wait for that promise to return me a resolve part of that promise. And then it will do something else, right? This is the first thing. Now, we used to catch, we used to uh, catch the reject part, right? We used to catch the reject part by using a dot catch in promises, right? But now what we will do? We will, uh, we will use the try and catch block. Now, why we are doing this? To handle our error. It says the error handling, right? So to, uh, to handle our errors, we use try and catch block. Now in try, we write the await part, right? In the await function. And then in catch, we write the error, whatever, whatever they reject is, it will go in the catch error. So this is the theory, right? If you do not understand it till now, believe me in the uh, uh, upcoming code in VS code, I will show you everything. Okay, so whatever the examples we are taking from the beginning of the details of a user, we first saw the asynchronous JavaScript, we then we saw the callbacks, then we saw the prom callback hell, then we saw the promises, and now we are using async await. So async await is the last part of this video, right? It is the last lecture on asynchronous JavaScript. So that's it. Yeah. So let's move and let's write and, and let's see the implementation of this uh, code. Okay. So right now I'm in the VS code and this is the example we saw in last video that how to define a promise. Then we define the resolve and reject and then we call it by dot then and dot catch. Now in this video, we are going to look how we can call this using async await. And as we told you all, as I told you earlier that async await is the more modified way to present our promises. So let's comment all this out. Let's comment this main part. Okay. So I have told you earlier that we have to first define the promise. Okay. Then we can use that promise. We can use async await. We use the await keyword to call that promise. So we have defined here the promise. Now we will just use how to write async await and how to use this promise. So, okay, let's start. We write the async, async keyword. So async, right, this is the keyword. And then we write the function. So function, let's say, let's say, let's say user, right? User. So this is the async keyword, which tells that this function is asynchronous, right? Now we, how, how we call this promise. So we say, let's say constant, constant uh, the data, right? And then we will use the await keyword, await. And then we write here the promise. 
so what is the promise of here how we define it by using the details so details so this is how the it calls the promise now if i do console dot log it will data okay so let me show let me show you what it's what how it will look like in console so my name is not Vinod. okay let me first yeah now let's see okay let me call this user function i have not called this user function in fact it is not showing okay yes yeah, say it says the my name is Vinod my is 20. now what is happening here right now see this await function as i told you earlier this will say okay i will wait for this promise for this promise to return me the resolve part and after that after when this promise will resolve this will, will return this resolve part then i will save this in data and then you can do whatever you want to do this with data so we have console this data right so await is just simple as that await will say that okay i will wait for this promise to return me the resolve part okay so that's it so let me so that's why it resolved that part right it saved their data and then we are showing the data in the console so let me write here something to make it more uh, data has been received right and plus right so as you can see in the console data has been received my name is Pinot my name is okay so we have seen this now in promises we use the dot catch right here we use the dot catch to handle our, our error so as simple as that now how do we use the dot how how do we use this reject method to call this in our async effect function now this is the error handling where it comes in we will use the simple try and catch block so i write this try right right i put this whole code and try block okay and then i will say catch i will pass the error and i will say console.log uh, data something like data is wrong and i will pass the error right so if i if i write something else here which is not equal to the name like something else so it will run this reject part and it will send this to in the catch part so if i see this you will say data is wrong my name is not binod okay as simple as that so this is the use of async event and as you can compare like how simple it looks right now if we compare this to this okay so as this is the small promise but in real world you will see more and more big promises then there will be you you have to use the chaining method dot then dot then so instead of using that chaining method you can use the simple await keyword and you you can use it at 100 times how many times do you want without get without getting confused okay so this is the one example we see but now let's see another example the most usage of the async await in the projects is to fetch api function right now what do i mean that let me show you write me a async function async function api right and let's assume we will call some api right so let's say constant data and we will use the fetch function okay so we will provide here the api right let me first show you we will provide here some api you know what api is api is some data right we will call that data so see this is the learning part here every fetch every fetch or every api returns a promise now how to handle that promise we can use the await function because we have learned that await will always resolve await will always return the resolve part of that promise so fetch function will always returns a promise right so if i 
if i this is the simple api you can find it on internet it's just returns the some cat facts right so we are using this api now this fetch using this fetch this will return a promise now how to handle this promise we already know we already know that how to handle this promise so we will say const state response right you can write here anything and we will say data dot um, await data right now we will just console dot log and we will say the response right and let's call this function okay so let's see in the console what it looks right now okay as you can see this that cat api returns a response and you can see there are so many parameters in this response function it says okay which means that this is 200 status and this is returning some response okay but we are not we are not showing this is not showing the data what is the actual data not to, to show that data we use the json part we use the dot json method so let me show you console response let's say one and then use await await response dot json right see if you don't know what json is let me tell you json is simple is simple it is the representing method that how you represent data in the object form in the key value form so we we got the response from this we stored it in data then we use this promise to call that resolve part of that data and then we store it into response right now we want the data from that response right we want the actual data from that response that's why we use dot json and now if i console dot response one it will show me the actual data what that api is having so let me save this and let me show you in the console so as you can see we can find here the actual data which say that this will return a fact and this will return the length of that fact so this is a simple and it's the json it's in the json format which means it will show our data in the key value format right so this is again the simple way of returning that returning uh, using the await async await to call the api now you can use again try block like you can try you can use try right um, you can uh, enclose all this and try and then you can catch something catch error and you can console.log error console.log error in the api so if i save this and if i show you in catch so it says error in the api so that's why we use async await so this is the best way of using the async await and we have successfully learned how to use async await so this is it thank you so I hope you like this video and if you do like it, please share it, subscribe to the channel. This is the end of the asynchronous JavaScript playlist, right? I hope you all understand all the videos. I don't want to create a one hour video or two hour video on asynchronous JavaScript. So I, that's why I created the 10, 10 minutes video so you can watch it by your own pace, right? So that's it. And please comment me below what next videos do you want on this JavaScript topic, right? What new playlist should I... Uh, what new playlist should I make on this JavaScript? Please let me do in the comments. Please let me know do in the comments. So till then, goodbye. Have a nice day.